normally open up by saying good evening, but as you probably know by now, it has been anything but a good evening here in our beautiful county tonight. So we're here to give you some details. Uh, joining us here at the podium is our state attorney, Bill Gladson of the 5th Judicial Circuit, Major Glenn Hall of the Sheriff's Office, Sheriff Billy Woods from Marion County Sheriff's Office, Major Todd English, and of course, Lake County Sheriff Peyton Grinnell. So I'm gonna turn it over to him and uh, let him walk you through some of the unfortunate events of tonight. Sheriff. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to speak to what we know at this time. Um, this is a very fluid scene right now, multiple agencies helping out. Uh, Florida Department of Law Enforcement is here conducting an investigation, but this all started around eight o'clock earlier off of Brookside Drive where we received a call of a disturbance that was in progress. Uh, the deputies responded and while they were conducting their investigation, uh, they were alerted to a home, we believe a couple, a couple houses down, that there was a problem there. And the deputies went to that home and saw what appeared to be the back door kicked in and they could hear a disturbance inside of that home. Uh, when the deputies entered the home, um, there was uh, a lot of gunfire uh, where one of the deputies was struck. The backup deputy that was there with him uh, was able to retreat out of the home. The first deputy was trapped inside of the home. Uh, multiple deputies responded at that time. They immediately formed a rescue team uh, to go back in to attempt to get the deputy sheriff that was still inside the home. And they were just met with a hail of gunfire, a lot of gunfire where another deputy sheriff was struck um, at that time. They were able to retreat. Uh, obviously, we mobilized our SWAT team, uh, knowing that we were dealing with a scene uh, with a lot of firepower against us. Um, the first deputy that was struck in the shoulder, I've been told is in stable condition now. The second deputy that was struck, he was struck in the armpit as well as in the groin in the stomach area multiple times, underwent uh, surgery and is in serious critical condition. And I was just informed uh, a little bit ago that the third deputy that was shot has passed away. Um, those notifications have been made. I will not get into specifics at this time of the names of the deputies. Uh, all of this is being investigated by the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. The individuals that were inside of the home, two were deceased. Um, and one was transported. I do not know the condition of the one that was transported, but two of the suspects, if you will, that were inside the home are deceased and one was transported out. Uh, with that, I'll take any questions. What kind of call was this, Sheriff? Was this domestic? I mean, once your deputies got in there in that barrage of bullets, what was the situation? What happened? So obviously all that's being looked into. Um, all, all I can tell you is it was a very violent scene. Uh, the deputies went to that home to conduct a well-being check uh, at the request of the complainant that was the original disturbance call. And, and they could hear a lot of commotion going on in there. Uh, and that was the reason they entered the home. And uh, as I stated, they were met with a uh, volley of gunfire. Sheriff, the deputy that has unfortunately passed away, was. can you clarify, was that the first deputy to enter the home yes. who was stuck inside? That, that is correct. Um, that, that deputy sheriff, I won't mention his name right now, has been with us for quite a while, started out as a young explorer, as a military veteran, and uh, just horrific when you have one of your own inside of a home and you can't get to them. Are there words you can offer to this community? We have been waiting out here. We have seen people who are waiting along with us who have had so much concern for your deputies and your staff tonight. Yeah, this is a great community. You know, it was uh, February of 2005 was the last time we lost a deputy sheriff in Lake County. So it's it's been a long time, thankfully, but uh, uh, tonight here we are again, but the uh, community outpour has been great. Considering the barrage of bullets and the situation that your deputies were under, how were you able to get the suspects finally? Because we saw from Chopper 2 basically a hole that was knocked in the side of the house. Even under the fierce conditions, how were you able to complete this? You know, we uh, we have equipment for that, and uh, that's the reason we have this equipment. Um, and, and we tore the home apart uh, to get in there uh, so we could get that deputy out of there. Um, it was just a... Uh, uh, 
it was a chaotic scene from the start until the end. Were the assailants deceased when you entered the home? Uh, two of the assailants were deceased upon SWAT entering the home, um, and the third one's been transported. And this was an initial disturbance at a different home? That's correct, in the, in the, in the very near proximity. Were they related? The two the That's all being looked at right now. And it's safe to say there's no longer a threat to the public on this road? No, we, we do not believe that there's any uh, threat to the public. Everybody that was involved is accounted for okay. uh, and, and uh, in custody. We saw a number of law enforcement agencies assist. At what point were they called in? How did that kind of play out? Uh, you know, when, when, when a law enforcement officer shot, especially here in the state of Florida, you don't have to ask for help. They show up, you know, Sheriff Woods from Marion County, FDLE, uh, had the FBI here helping, um, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms, many, many agencies here. Uh, and, and, and that's what we do. We come together for this. And uh, it's going to be a long time before uh, we get back to a sense of normal. And as far as the families are concerned of the deputies injured, the deputies killed, I know it's a tough time for them. You've been able to talk to them, Sheriff? Um, I, I have our critical incident stress management team with them. When I leave you, that's where I'm going. Anything else you want to add? Because this has been a tough situation. And I know it's tough for the men and women in blue and black in a situation like this because you're all family. Yeah, I, I would just ask that uh, you keep the men and women of this agency and law enforcement in general in your prayers. They have a tough job. Um, and uh, we, we lost one tonight. Thank you, sir. Are Thank you for your to the community? I'm sorry. A quick message to the community. Uh, yeah, I'd like to just say thank you for uh, all of the uh, prayers and, and all of the text and emails and the phone calls that we're getting in support uh, of the deputy sheriff. So thank you very much for that. Sheriff, one question. It was this house known to your deputies? Had they? Ha is there any kind of history of this house? Well, the, the history that we found so far, really, um, it, it's animal uh, complaints. Uh, our animal enforcement unit's been out there for a couple times, but uh, we don't show anything. right As of right now, we don't show anything of any violent crime. So no way they expected anything like this to happen tonight. They were ambushed. But again, and it was a well-being check on one house, a barrage of bullets in another, and they started shooting at your deputies first? A actually, we went to a disturbance at one house. The initial call was for a disturbance, and then while we were on that scene, somebody at that scene told the deputies they needed to go to the other house, that that's where there was a problem happening, and when they got there, they saw what appeared to be a, a door kicked in, and uh, there was some commotion in the home, and they were just met with uh, a lot of gunfire. Was it a domestic call, a domestic disturbance call? No, the original call was just a disturbance in, in the neighborhood. Sheriff, that second home, did did your crews find anything else concerning inside of that house? Um, I, I can tell you, upon the initial sweep of the SWAT team, uh, there's multiple, multiple firearms inside of that home, everything from long guns to handguns. Is that why we saw EOD? Uh, we, we always have EOD come out when we're doing a, an entry on a home because you just don't know what you're going to enter how into. Long, how long was this deputy on the force for, sir? Um, I don't have all the specifics right now, um, and, and I just want to be careful about talking about that until I make sure all of the families notified. Okay. The two suspects who were deceased at that scene were they killed by one person? That, that's all being looked at by FDLE. I, I don't know um, if it was our deputies that uh, uh, shot the two that were deceased uh, or if it was a, a murder-suicide, which we see in, in these type of situations. And lastly, the deputy that was airlifted to Waterman, is that the deputy that, uh, that died? Um, no, ma'am. I believe the deputy um, that passed away was ground transported. Okay. Have there been previous calls to this house in the past? I mean, let's talk about this street and this community. Yeah, the only calls that were showing that uh, we had a uh, reason to go out to that particular area was for animal enforcement complaints. Thank you, Sheriff. Sheriff, yeah. can you confirm that there, there is one of the deputies at Waterman Hospital? We've been told that there's quite a large law enforcement presence there tonight. And is that related to, to this? Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you yeah. for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you.